Jack felt the ground shake beneath his feet as the ship's door slammed shut. The noise echoed through the still air, leaving him alone in a place he had never seen before. He looked around, trying to understand where he was. The sky was a strange orange, as if someone had spilled juice on the normal blue. Heavy gray clouds hung overhead, making Jack feel small and lost. Hey, come back here, he shouted, but his voice disappeared into the wind. The ship was already just a dot in the sky, getting smaller and smaller until it disappeared for good. Jack took a deep breath and soon regretted it. The air smelled funny, like old socks mixed with rotten lemon. He coughed and covered his nose with his shirt sleeve. Great, he muttered to himself. Had a fight with the captain and now I'm stuck in this crazy place. He looked at what he was carrying, his violin in one hand and a small backpack in the other. Inside the backpack were just a few bars of space food, a half-empty bottle of water, and a thin blanket. At least they didn't leave me with nothing, Jack said, trying to cheer himself up. But it was hard to be happy when everything around him seemed so… dead. The ground was all cracked and dry as if it hadn't rained for years. There was no grass, no trees, nothing green. Just sand, stones, and more stones as far as the eye could see. Jack started to walk, his boots clacking on the hard ground. He didn't know where to go, but standing still wasn't going to help. After a while, he saw something on the horizon. It looked like a city, but it was the strangest city he had ever seen. The buildings were all crooked and pointed, as if they had been drawn by someone who didn't know how to use a ruler. Some were so tall that they seemed to scrape the orange sky. Others were low and round, like giant soap bubbles made of metal. Wow, Jack whispered. It's like something out of a science fiction movie. The closer he got to the city, the stranger it got. The streets were wide, but there was no one on them. No cars, no animals, nothing moving. It was as if everyone had suddenly disappeared. The silence was frightening. Jack could hear every step he took, the noise echoing between the empty buildings. Every now and then, a metal plate creaked in the wind, making him jump in fright. Hello? He called out. Is anyone there? Nothing. Only the wind answered whistling between the buildings. Jack kept walking, looking everywhere. He saw stores with dusty windows, parks without toys, and houses with dark windows. Everything seemed to have been abandoned for a long time. The sun began to set, turning the sky even more orange. The shadows became long and dark, making Jack feel even more alone. I need to find somewhere to sleep, he said to himself, and maybe something to eat other than those awful space food bars. That's when he saw it. At the end of a street, a light blinked faintly. It was a bar sign. The letters faded, but you could still read, The Last Sip. Jack felt a mixture of relief and fear. Relief because he had finally found some sign of life. Fear because he didn't know what, or who, he would find inside. He slung his violin over his shoulder and clutched his backpack to his chest. He took courage and walked slowly to the door of the bar. Well, he said quietly, I don't have much choice, do I? It's either that or sleep on the street. Jack stretched out his hand, hesitated for a second, and then pushed on the door. It opened with a creak that seemed too loud in the silence of the city. He stepped inside, blinking to get used to the dim light. The bar was small and stuffy. There were a few old wooden tables scattered around, a long counter with stools at the front and shelves full of strange bottles at the back. The smell was a mixture of dust, alcohol, and something Jack couldn't identify. And there, behind the counter, was someone. Or something. It was hard to tell. The figure was tall and thin, with pale blue skin and large black eyes that shone in the dim light. Jack swallowed. His heart was beating so hard it felt like it was going to jump out of his chest, but he had already come this far, he couldn't turn back now. Hi, he said, his voice coming out thinner than he wanted. I... I'm new here. Is there somewhere I can stay? The creature behind the counter looked at him for a long moment. Then, slowly, a smile broke out on its face. It wasn't a human smile, but Jack thought it looked friendly. Welcome to the last sip, traveler, said the creature, in a voice that resembled the sound of tinkling bells. Looks like you've had a long day. How about a drink? Jack let out the breath he hadn't even realized he was holding. Maybe, just maybe, things weren't so bad after all. Jack looked at the strange drink that the alien barman placed in front of him. It was purple and bubbling a little, as if it were alive. Is it safe for humans? He asked, sniffing the liquid carefully. 
The barman made a sound that sounded like a laugh. Of course it is. It's our most popular drink. It's called Starsi. Try it. Jack took a small sip. It tasted sweet and sour at the same time, as if someone had mixed grape juice with lemonade. It wasn't bad. I like it, he said, smiling at the barman. Thanks. As he drank, Jack looked around the bar. The tables and chairs looked normal, but they were made of a material that glowed slightly in the dark. The walls had paintings of landscapes he had never seen before. Floating mountains, oceans of fire, crystal forests. In the corner, there was a machine that looked like a mixture of a jukebox and a computer. It made funny noises from time to time, as if it were humming to itself. Is that a music machine? Jack asked, pointing. The barman shook his head. Not exactly. It's an emotion tuner. It plays sounds that match the mood of the customers. Jack was impressed. Everything there was so different from what he knew. Suddenly, the door to the bar opened. Jack turned around, curious to see who was coming in. His eyes widened in surprise. The first creature that entered looked like a giant octopus, but it walked on two legs. It had shiny purple skin and wore a kind of vest full of pockets. Right behind it came something that resembled a dog, but with six legs and light blue skin. And then, Jack didn't even know how to describe it. It was as if someone had taken a bunch of geometric shapes, triangles, circles, cubes, and put them together into a living creature. Good evening, everyone. The barman greeted the new arrivals. The usual? The creatures replied in different languages, but to Jack's surprise, he understood everything. My translator still works, he exclaimed happily. The giant octopus turned to him, its eyes, all eight of them, blinking with curiosity. Oh, we have a new face here, said the creature. Where do you come from, little two-armed creature? Jack swallowed nervously, but replied, I'm from Earth. It's a planet a long way from here. The geometric being made a noise that sounded like a horn. Earth? I've never heard of it. It must be really far away. The six-legged dog approached, sniffing Jack with interest. You smell different, he commented. But it looks nice. Do you want to play fetch later? Jack laughed, relaxing a little. Maybe another day. I'm pretty tired right now. The barman, who had been watching everything, leaned over the bar. Hey, kid, he called out to Jack. You got a place to stay tonight? Jack shook his head, suddenly remembering that he was alone on that strange planet. Not really, he replied sadly. The barman scratched his chin, or what looked like a chin, thoughtfully. Look, I've got a little room at the back of the bar. It's not much, but it's clean and safe. How about staying there for a few days? In return, you can help me out here in the bar. How's that? Jack's eyes lit up. Really? That would be amazing. I accept. The rest of the evening passed quickly. Jack chatted with the alien customers, learning about their lives and cultures. He helped the barman serve drinks and clear tables. When the last customer left, the barman showed Jack to the small back room. It was a cramped space, with a strange bed that looked more like a giant hammock and a small window that showed the orange sky outside. But for Jack, at that moment, it seemed like the coziest place in the universe. He lay down on the hammock, rocking slightly. He thought about everything that had happened that crazy day. He had been thrown out of his ship, abandoned on a strange planet, and now, now he had a place to stay and new alien friends. What do you know? He muttered to himself, smiling. Maybe this isn't the worst thing that's ever happened to me. With that happy thought, Jack closed his eyes and fell asleep, dreaming of space adventures and strangely shaped friends. Jack opened his eyes and for a moment didn't know where he was. The ceiling was a strange color, half blue, half green. Then he remembered the alien planet, the bar, the back room, my first day on the job, he muttered, sitting down on the bed. In an alien bar, who knew? He stood up, stretching. There was no shower in the little room, but there was a kind of booth with a purple light. Jack entered it, curious. Suddenly, he felt a tingling sensation all over his body. When he came out, he was clean and so were his clothes. Nice, he said, smiling. Better than a shower. Jack picked up his violin and left the room. The bar was still empty, but the barman was already there, cleaning glasses with his long blue tentacles. Morning, Jack, the barman said cheerfully. Ready to learn the trade? Jack nodded, excited. Yes, sir. Where do we start? The barman laughed. First, no, sir. My name is Zork, and let's start with the drinks. Zork led Jack to the shelves behind the bar. 
There were bottles of every color and shape imaginable. This one, Zork pointed to a bottle that seemed to be on fire inside, is Xenon Liquid Fire. Very popular, but be careful. If you shake it too much, it'll explode. Jack swallowed. Explode? Like boom? Exactly, Zork replied, as if it were the most normal thing in the world. Now, let's see you pour a shot. With trembling hands, Jack picked up the bottle. It was warm to the touch. Very slowly, he tilted the bottle over a glass. Don't be afraid, Zork encouraged. Trust is everything. Jack took a deep breath and poured. The liquid poured into the glass, glowing like lava. Well done, Zork applauded with his tentacles. Now let's get to the nebula nectar. The morning flew by as Jack learned about the alien drinks. Some bubbled, others changed color, and there was even one that floated in the air. When the first customers arrived, Jack was nervous but excited. An alien who looked like a walking tree approached the counter. Hello, Jack said, smiling. What can I get you today? The alien tree made a rustling sound like leaves in the wind. Jack looked at his translator, confused. He asked for an asteroid breeze with a touch of stardust, Zork explained. Oh, of course, Jack replied, as if he knew exactly what that was. He looked at the bottles, lost. Zork laughed and showed him which ones to use. Jack prepared the drink, being careful not to knock anything over. Here you go, he said, handing the glass to the tree customer. The alien drank it and his leaves all bristled. He made more leaf noises. He liked it, Zork translated. He said you were good at it. Jack smiled, proud. The rest of the day was a mixture of hard work and funny situations. He served drinks that changed flavor with every sip, learned how to use the emotion tuner, which was more complicated than it looked, and even helped clean up some purple goo that a customer dropped on the floor. In the middle of the afternoon during a break, Jack picked up his violin. He hadn't played since he arrived on the planet and his fingers were itching to play. What's that? Zork asked, curious. It's a musical instrument from Earth, Jack explained. It's called a violin. Do you want to hear it? Zork nodded, his big eyes shining with curiosity. Jack placed the violin on his shoulder and began to play a soft, cheerful melody. The bar fell silent. All the aliens stopped what they were doing to listen. When Jack finished, there was a moment of silence and then... Applause. Well, some clapped, others flapped their tentacles, and there was even one who made the sound of bubbles bursting. Incredible, Zork exclaimed. I've never heard anything like it. The customers started asking for more songs. Jack played a few more, happy to see how everyone liked them. When the bar finally closed late at night, Jack was exhausted but feeling good. He helped Zork clean up and then went to his room. Lying on his cot, Jack thought about the day he'd had. It had been difficult, confusing at times, but also a lot of fun. And his music. Everyone had loved it so much. Who knows, he thought, his eyes closing with sleep. Maybe I can do some gigs here, make some money. Maybe even... But before he could finish the thought, Jack fell asleep, a smile on his face, dreaming of alien music and cocktails that glowed in the dark. Jack was sleeping peacefully when he heard knocks on his bedroom door. He opened his eyes, still drowsy, and saw Zork coming in all excited. Jack, wake up! I've got an incredible idea, Zork said, his tentacles waving with excitement. Jack sat up in bed, rubbing his eyes. Good morning, Zork. What idea? Zork sat down, sort of, since he didn't exactly have legs, on the edge of the bed. Remember how everyone liked your song yesterday? What if you played here in the bar on a regular basis like real gigs? Jack's eyes widened. Really? Do you think it would work? Of course it would, Zork replied. I've never seen customers so excited. I bet if we advertise your shows, the bar will be packed. Jack jumped out of bed, now fully awake and full of energy. Let's do it. When can we start? Zork laughed at his friend's excitement. How about in three days? That gives you time to get ready and me time to spread the word. Perfect, Jack exclaimed. He was already thinking about the songs he could play. Over the next few days, Jack worked hard. In the morning, he helped Zork in the bar. In the afternoon, he practiced his violin. He wanted to do something special, something the aliens had never heard before. Hey, Zork, Jack called out during a break in work. What's the music like here, from this planet? Zork thought for a moment. Well, we have the Song of the Stones. That's when the wind passes through the crystal mountains and makes a beautiful sound. And there's the buzz of the moons. 
when our three satellites line up. Jack listened carefully, trying to imagine these sounds. Can I hear recordings of that? Zork showed Jack how to use a strange device that looked like a bunch of seashells stuck together. Out of it came the most incredible sounds Jack had ever heard. Inspired, Jack began to create new music. He mixed melodies from Earth with the alien rhythms he heard. Sometimes he would bang on glasses and bottles in the bar to make percussion. At other times, he used the emotion tuner to create special effects. Meanwhile, Zork was spreading the word about the show. He spoke to all the customers and even went out into the streets announcing it. Come and see the incredible Jack of the Earth, Zork shouted. Music never before heard on this planet. Finally, the big day arrived. Jack was nervous, his hands sweating as he tuned his violin. The bar was full, fuller than he had ever seen it. There were aliens of all kinds, some with tentacles, some with wings, some that looked like plants and others that were pure light. Zork had improvised a small stage using empty boxes. Jack climbed onto it, feeling his heart pound. What if they didn't like it? What if they found Earth's music too strange? Good evening, everyone, Jack said into the microphone, which was actually an alien flower that amplified sounds. I'm Jack, and I'm going to play some music for you today. He took a deep breath, positioned his violin, and began to play. The first song was a mixture of an old Earth lullaby and the sound of the Song of the Stones that Zork had shown him. The bar fell completely silent. When Jack finished, there was a moment of silence. Then, suddenly, the audience erupted into, well, not exactly applause. Some flapped tentacles, others flashed lights, and a group at the back made a sound that resembled bubbles bursting. But Jack understood. They had enjoyed it. Encouraged, Jack continued. He played cheerful songs that made the aliens dance in strange and funny ways. He played slow melodies that made some of them glow softly, and he ended with an alien version of Happy Birthday, which made everyone sing along in a jumble of voices, buzzes, and whistles. When the show was over, Jack was sweating but grinning from ear to ear. Zork got up on stage and hugged him with all his tentacles. That was amazing, Jack, Zork exclaimed. I've never seen the bar so lively. The customers crowded around Jack, asking questions, requesting more songs, some even offering strange gifts. One of them gave Jack what looked like a singing stone. That night, lying on his cot, Jack couldn't stop smiling. He had found his place in this strange world. His music had touched the hearts, or whatever the aliens had for hearts, of the inhabitants of this planet. Who knew, Jack thought, closing his eyes, that I'd become a music star on an alien planet. With that happy thought, he fell asleep, dreaming of new music and new friends in strange ways. Jack could hardly believe what was happening. After his first gig in Zork's bar, things changed very quickly. Every night, the bar was so full that some aliens had to stand outside, stretching their tentacles or antennae out of the window to hear the music. Jack, you won't believe it, Zork said one day, his eyes shining with excitement. The owner of Cafe Nebulosa wants you to play there at the weekend. Jack's eyes widened. Really? But I don't even know where that place is. Zork laughed. It's the most famous cafe in town. It's at the top of the Crystal Tower. You can see the three moons from there. And so it began. Jack played in Zork's bar almost every night, and at weekends he went to play in other places in the city. He visited the floating bubble room where the audience floated in the air while he played. He played in the Crystal Garden where the plants danced to his music. But with all this fame also came challenges. Jack had to get up early to help Zork in the bar, then rehearse new songs and play gigs in the evenings. He hardly had time to rest. Zork, Jack said one day, sounding tired. How do I manage all this? Zork put a tentacle on Jack's shoulder. Hey, buddy, you don't have to do everything yourself. How about we hire someone to help out at the bar? Then you'll have more time to prepare for the gigs. Jack smiled gratefully. That would be great, Zork. Thanks. But it wasn't just the work that was getting difficult. People... I mean, aliens were treating Jack differently. When he walked down the street, everyone stopped to stare. Some wanted to take pictures with very strange cameras that looked like space fruit. Others asked for autographs on his tentacles or scales. One day, Jack was in the market trying to buy food when he was surrounded by a group of alien fans. Jack, Jack, play us a song, they shouted, waving their tentacles and antennae. Jack felt a little scared. Sorry, I just wanted to buy some fruit but the aliens kept asking for music and autographs. Jack didn't know what to do. Suddenly, Zork appeared. Hey, guys! He shouted. 
Anyone who wants to hear Jack play has to go to the bar tonight. Now let the boy do his shopping in peace. The aliens, although a little disappointed, walked away. Jack looked at Zork, relieved. Thanks, Zork. I don't know what I'd do without you. Zork shrugged, or what looked like a shrug to someone with tentacles. That's what friends are for, isn't it? Weeks passed, and Jack continued to play gigs and enchant the aliens with his music. Then one day, Zork arrived with some exciting news. Jack, you won't believe it. The town mayor wants you to play at the Three Moons Festival. Jack almost dropped the glass he was cleaning. What? But isn't this the biggest event in town? Zork nodded, his tentacles twitching with excitement. Exactly. It's when the Three Moons align. The whole town will be there. On the day of the festival, Jack was more nervous than ever. Thousands of aliens of all shapes and colors were gathered in the city's large central square. The stage was huge, made of crystal that sparkled under the light of the three moons aligned in the sky. When Jack stepped onto the stage, his legs were shaking a little. He looked at the crowd and saw Zork in the front row, giving a thumbs-up sign with a tentacle. Jack took a deep breath, closed his eyes, and began to play. He played songs from Earth mixed with the sounds he had learned in this new world. He played about homesickness and the joy of making new friends. He played about the stars and the three bright moons. When he opened his eyes, he saw something incredible. The whole audience was glowing softly, as if the music had ignited a light inside each of them. Some floated in the air, others waved tentacles or wings to the rhythm of the music. At the end of the show, the applause, if you can call the sound of tentacles, claws, and antennae flapping, was deafening. Jack bowed, smiling, but feeling a strange mixture of emotions. Later, back in his little room in Zork's bar, Jack stared out of the window at the three moons in the sky. He thought about how his life had changed. A few weeks ago, he was just a violinist lost on a strange planet. Now, he was an alien music star. It's incredible, he thought. I'm happy, but it's a lot to deal with. Jack picked up his violin and began to play quietly, just for himself. It was a new song, about feeling lost and found at the same time. About being far from home, but making a new home among the stars. And as he played, Jack smiled. He knew that no matter what happened, he would always have his music. And his friend, Zork. And that, for now, was enough. Jack left the bar after another busy show. His head ached a little and his fingers were tired from playing the violin. The cool night air made him feel better. I think I'll go for a walk, he thought. I need to stretch my legs a bit. The streets were almost empty. The three moons shone in the sky, making things look blue and silver. Jack walked aimlessly, looking at the strange buildings of the alien city. Some seemed to be made of crystal, others of shiny metal. There were buildings that seemed to be upside down and others that rotated slowly. After a while, Jack arrived at a park. It was a beautiful place, with trees with shiny leaves and flowers that seemed to twinkle like little stars. He thought he was alone there, but then he heard something. It was a voice. Someone was singing. Jack followed the sound, curious. The voice was beautiful, like nothing he had ever heard before. It wasn't an alien voice. It sounded human, but at the same time, different. Behind a large, shining tree, Jack saw who was singing. It was a woman. She had long, dark hair that seemed to dance on its own, even without the wind. Her skin glowed faintly as if she had stars inside her. The woman stopped singing and looked at Jack. Her eyes were a color Jack had never seen before. Hi, she said, smiling. You must be Jack, the musician from Earth. Jack blinked, surprised. You, you know me? The woman laughed. The sound was like little bells ringing. Everyone knows you here, I'm Lily. Your voice is amazing, Lily, Jack said. I've never heard anything like it. Lily smiled again. Thank you. I like your music, too. It's different from anything else we have here. Jack sat down next to her on the soft, shiny grass. They began to talk. Jack told her about Earth and how he came to be on this planet. Lily listened attentively, asking interesting questions. Then, Lily started talking about the planet. She knew a lot. She talked about the three moons and how they affected the tides in the crystal oceans. She told ancient stories about the first creatures that lived there. She talked about the singing mountains and the rivers that glowed in the dark. Wow, Jack said, impressed. How do you know all this? Lily shrugged, 
her eyes shining in a strange way. I... I like studying the history here. They talked for hours. Jack didn't even notice the time passing. The sky was already getting lighter when Lily stood up. It's almost dawn, she said. But before we go, how about we sing something together? Jack smiled and picked up his violin. Sure, what do you want to sing? Lily closed her eyes for a moment. Let's create something new, something that blends your world and mine. Jack began to play a soft melody. Lily listened for a moment and then began to sing. Her voice blended perfectly with Jack's violin. And then something strange happened. The flowers around them began to glow brighter. The trees shook their leaves, even in the absence of wind. Jack felt as if the ground itself was vibrating to the music. Lily's voice grew stronger. It sounded like she was singing in many languages at once, some Jack knew, others he had never heard. It was as if the music itself was alive. When they finished, they were silent for a moment. Jack looked at Lily, feeling something strange in his chest. It was as if they had connected somehow through the music. That was incredible, Jack said softly. Lily smiled, her eyes shining in a mysterious way. It really was. Thank you, Jack. It was special for me, too. They said goodbye, promising to meet again. As Jack walked back to Zork's bar, he couldn't stop thinking about Lily. There was something about her, something different, something magical. Who is she really? Jack asked himself. But he knew one thing. That night had changed something inside him, and he couldn't wait to see Lily again. Jack couldn't get Lily out of his mind. In the days that followed their encounter in the park, he found himself staring into the street, hoping to see her dark, shiny hair. But she was nowhere to be seen. One day, while cleaning glasses at the bar, Jack sighed loudly. Zork, who was arranging the bottles on the shelves, noticed. What's up, buddy? Zork asked, his tentacles moving with concern. You look sad. Jack hesitated for a moment, but decided to tell him. Zork, I met someone. A girl called Lily. Zork's eyes widened. Lily? Where did you meet her? In the park, a few days ago, Jack replied. She had an incredible voice. We sang together and... It was magical. Zork was very quiet for a moment. Then, in a serious voice that Jack had never heard before, he said, Jack, I think we need to talk. They sat down at a table in the corner of the bar. Zork looked nervous, his tentacles twitching. Jack, he began, there are ancient stories on this planet, legends about a, well, a mysterious entity. Jack leaned forward, curious. What kind of entity? Zork continued, they say that sometimes when the planet needs it, a figure appears, a woman with dark hair that seems to dance by itself eyes of a color impossible to describe, and a voice, a voice that can make miracles happen. Jack felt a chill. That description was exactly like Lily. Zork, he said softly. I think I've found this entity. Zork nodded slowly. I was afraid that's what it was. Jack, this entity, they say it's the very soul of the planet, that it appears in times of great change or danger. Jack was dumbfounded. But why would it appear to me? That, Zork said, is what we need to find out. Over the next few days, Jack immersed himself in the planet's legends. He visited the city library, a building made of crystals that changed color, talked to the older inhabitants, listened to old stories. The more he learned, the more fascinated he became. The stories spoke of a presence that protected the planet. Sometimes it appeared as a woman with an enchanting voice, other times as a gentle wind or a mysterious light. In ancient times, an old blue-skinned alien told Jack, When great storms threatened to destroy everything, they say she sang to calm the winds. Jack listened carefully, always thinking about Lily. Could she really be this magical entity? But then strange things started to happen. One day while Jack was playing the violin in the park, he noticed that the flowers around him seemed to be growing faster. The buds opened as he played, as if the music was making them bloom. Hey, Zork! Jack called out pointing to a plant on the bar. Wasn't that fern smaller yesterday? Zork looked surprised. You're right, it looks like it grew 10 centimeters overnight. Another time, during a concert, Jack saw the bar lights flashing in a strange pattern. It wasn't random. It seemed to follow the rhythm of the music. Did you see that? He asked a customer after the show. The alien, which looked like a mixture of an octopus and a tree, shook its branches. See what? 
Jack realized that perhaps only he was noticing these strange things. One evening, while walking home after a concert, Jack saw his reflection in a shop window. For a second, he could have sworn he saw little lights dancing around him, like fireflies. But when he looked again, they were gone. Jack didn't know what to think. Was he imagining things? Or did it all have to do with Lily and that magical night in the park? He remembered the feeling he had when he sang with Lily. As if the song was alive. As if it could change the world around them. I need to find her again, Jack thought. I need to understand what's going on. But Lily was still missing. Jack looked for her in every face in the crowd, in every shadow in the park. Sometimes he thought he heard her voice on the wind, but when he turned around, there was no one. Jack knew that something big was happening, something he didn't fully understand. But one thing he knew for sure, his life would never be the same after meeting Lily. As he walked back to the bar that night, Jack looked up at the sky with its three bright moons. Where are you, Lily? He whispered to the stars. And what do you want from me? The stars winked in response, as if they held a secret that Jack wasn't yet ready to discover.